So this video is about um, my meditation last night. I usually meditate before I go to sleep on my each and individual chakra. And a lot of the times I will astral project during the upper chakras while I'm focused on each one. And I seem to take the most time on the upper chakras. They have the most depth of development for my being currently. <clears throat> and I really had a little bit of a breakthrough. And this was not actually anything really new for me. But it was like a, a coming together of different... Not ideas, but different modes of vision. And the first one would be the the traditional uh, astral projecting, project your, your consciousness outside of your body, and then, you know, you can see yourself in the room if you want to, and then you, and then I will take off and, and, you know, fly wherever I want. That's, that's the first access way, and that's how I would do it a lot of the times when I'm astral projecting. There's kind of a drawback to that one that it kind of tends to follow a linear pathway that it, it's kind of like I will have to access some kind of portal like being the sun or a different star and I'll have to use light speed to get somewhere and you know light speed takes time so it's kind of like it's not that it's limiting it's that it's it has this linear quality and That is what it is. <clears throat> so the second one is the one that I described before in the last few videos, <clears throat> projecting through the back into control room type atmosphere, which would be <clears throat> the red letter ticker room where it's all letters and numbers like the matrix, only cooler. <laughs> and then I can shift my focus from this projection to a different projection or, you know, switch that as desired. I've only explored that a little bit as I've been really grounded in my, uh, my uh, <laughs> physical experience. So I haven't really been taking that much focus into these mental exercises, spiritual exercises. I've been more focusing on, on my body and working within the parameters of my brain instead of going outside of that. That one feels more realistic in that the, the projections end up having less of my imagination and more of decoding of actual experiences where my brain will decipher the images that are coming through whereas astral projection my subconscious actually has takes part in co-creating the visions that I'm seeing in in small ways since it's it's like the dream world more so things can be more fantastic and yet, bless realistic. <laughs> so the third one is one that I kind of had lost. I found this one and lost it. When I was given my, my angel body and my uh, angel wings, I really hadn't thought too much into it, but I didn't have a halo at that time. And eventually I was then given my halo in a, in a ceremony where I accessed the vibration of being given the halo and realized that the angels use the halo as like a dimensional 
access way, they will turn their halo, it's like, you know, like dimensional roulette kind of, <laughs> turn the halo and it, and it, it brings you to a different, it like shifts your focus to a different uh, dimension, realm, plane, whatever you want to really call it. So I, I remembered this and it was, and a lot of my angelic experiences are really, really, you know, kind of blow of conscious level. So I'm not really always accessing those. <laughs> but when after I realized this, I started playing with it, and I would turn the halo, and it would it would shift my focus to a different reality. I would I would see, you know, whatever there was to see, energy, or you know, scenery indescribable stuff. One of them was a control room type atmosphere like the red letter ticker access way, doorway, whatever. But this one I guess you would call it a starship. <clears throat> and from from the starship this was this was like uh like being inside of the computer process that was able to see these different they were represented as screens again but this had a more fleshed out feeling than the the red letter ticker feels room that the room one feels like it's myth missing half, like I can only see forward. Maybe I can only see forward in the other one, too. I'll have to work on the 3D vision. <laughs> uh, 4D vision. <laughs> but it feel, felt more fleshed out, and I was able to have... Uh, more fantastic experiences so it was like a blending that that the astral projection with the with the fa fantastic parts of that was kind of blended in with the realistic of the remote viewing so that I could have this um, more fleshed out experience where I'm seeing better in these other dimensions and accessing these vibrations a little bit better. <clears throat> so when I saw this and I went like, Whoo, I'm spinning the thing and I'm looking around and you know, I, I was at the white light realm or one of them, there's probably a lot of them. And this was really like, you know, I'm, I'm seeing like these, they were decoded as like cloud looking things, but they were like beings, and there's a white light being, looked like an E.T., had like the kind of the head like an E.T., and it was talking to me, and I like, it was trying to, it, and it showed me a lot about the interconnectedness of dimensionality, and how every little minor thing that we you know, don't really think of, or, or maybe we do think of that. That it reverberates through the other dimensions, and other other beings that are connected to us, and that <laughs> there's a lot more pathways and and within this interconnectedness that I had thought of before. So that was kind of a little bit eye opening. <clears throat> But at the same time, I, this was kind of a new uh, type experience in a way that I didn't really have control. Part of me was like jumping up and down and wanted to spin this thing like the roulette wheel and just have like a kaleidoscope type experience where I'm seeing, you know. 
energy and beings and scenery and, you know, etc. around and round. Whoa, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> I think I am really have to explain these things even to myself because I, when I go into the state where I'm able to access it, that some of that gets lost on my on my waking consciousness, even though I'm awake when I do these things, it's like it's a different mode of my brain than I normally access in everyday life. And <clears throat> there's a reason for that. I'm not going to uh, astral project while I'm, you know, at the grocery store or, you know, walking around or driving because, you know, I need to have control of my physical being and the and the events that are going down <clears throat> in real time. So those are my experiences last night and I'm thankful for being able to share this especially with myself and my conscious <laughs> experience. So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for clicking the like button so that more people can see my videos. Alright, namaste.